Number five on this list is the werewolf. Werewolves originated in Eastern Europe. They were first seen and reported in countries like Hungary, Romania, and the Balkans. That was a long time ago and the creatures have evolved and become far more widespread. These are not simply European dwellers anymore, my friends. If you think that America is werewolf free, then think again. Werewolves have actually been in America for quite some time. PenLive writes, mostly in northwestern Pennsylvania, some of the reports date back to the early 1960s, while others have been as recent as 2014. Most of those reported sightings estimate a dogman to be about 7 feet tall when standing or walking on its hind legs, three or four feet at the shoulder when on all fours. It's described as very muscular and weighing 400 to 500 pounds. Some reports portray it as entirely covered by hair while others claim it to be a man with a wolf's head. In general, the dogman is reported as being much more aggressive than other undiscovered creatures. It seems to be spotted regularly at large, freshly killing prey like deer, and it has a reputation of confronting and menacing humans who encounter it. In Michigan, reports of the creature have been traced as far back as the 1794 journal of a French fur trader who described it as Lou Garou, which is French for werewolf. Algonquin legend includes references to similar creatures as well. These werewolves have been here for quite a while and they're still very active. The American woods have a lot of scary creatures and werewolves are one of them. Number four on this list is the cottonmouth snake. This is a very real creature that you do not want to run into. Live Science writes, Cottonmouths, also called water moccasins, are venomous snakes found in the southeastern United States. They're called cottonmouths because of the white coloration on the inside of their mouths, which they display when threatened. Cottonmouths are semi-aquatic, so they're comfortable both swimming in water and basking on land. They're the only venomous snake in the US that spends a lot of time in the water. Live Science previously reported, they're the only venomous snake in the US that spends a lot of time in the water. Other local names for cottonmouths include black moccasins, gapers, mangrove rattlers, snap jaws, stub tail snakes, swamp lions, trap jaws, water mambas, and water pilots. Cottonmouths are pit vipers, as are copperheads and rattlesnakes, according to Sarah Virnum, a herpetologist based in Portland, Oregon. Like all pit vipers, cottonmouths have heat-seizing facial pits between their eyes and nostrils, Vernum says. These specialized pits are able to detect minute differences in temperature so that the snake can accurately strike the source of heat, which is often potential prey. That's a great little excerpt from Live Science, kind of detailing the basics about these cottonmouth snakes. What they fail to bring up though and why this snake made the list of terrifying creatures is because this snake is the most poisonous snake in all of America. This bite will definitely incapacitate you and it's very likely that you're going to die if you don't get the antidote very quickly. It's going to be super hard for you to get the antidote though because the poison acts fast and you might not be able to move. Most often than not, people that die from these snakes actually die from drowning. Because these snakes prefer to be in the water, people will often get bit while they're swimming and then won't be able to have the strength or ability to swim to shore before drowning right there. There's a reason to be worried about cryptids and urban legends, but don't be fooled folks. We have some super scary, super dangerous creatures in our world that people run into on a daily basis. The Cottonmouth is one of the scariest ones in America. Number three on this list is the Ohio Grassman. Now this is one that you haven't probably heard about before. Everyone's heard of Bigfoot and the legends surrounding that legendary creature, but the Grassman hardly ever gets talked about, and it should. Cryptid Wiki writes, The Grassman is a tall, bipedal hominid that stalks the woods of Ohio, hence the name Ohio Grassman. It is reportedly very similar to Bigfoot. It seems to be much more aggressive than any other Sasquatch species though. The grassman gets its name from the small hut-like living structures or nests it builds out of tall grass. The first prominent sighting of the grassman occurred in the small village of Minerva, Ohio in August 1978 when the grandchildren of Minerva residents Evelyn and Hal Clayton along with their friends ran inside screaming about a hairy monster they saw in the gravel pit outside. When the couple went out to investigate they saw what the children were crying about. It was covered in dark matted hair sitting in the pit and fiddling with discarded trash. It was estimated to be about 300 pounds. This isn't the only time that people have run into this massive cryptid. There are stories where people are out walking their dogs in the woods and this creature attacks. 
Lots of those stories have ended up with the dog not being able to walk away from the situation. No one knows if this creature is real or not. It could just be a massive bear that people have mistakenly took as something else, but by the way it operates, it's incredibly aggressive, and the way it makes its home into a hut-like structure, like these are all unique qualities that I don't think would apply to a bear. It makes me think that it isn't that or something else, but that whatever killed these dogs, whatever scared these people, I mean, it could be the grass man. Lucky for most of us, it seems to only reside in Ohio, so if you don't live in Ohio, then you should be fine, but if you do, then definitely watch the heck out. Number two on this list is the Big Muddy Monster. The name, the Big Muddy monster doesn't really strike a whole lot of fear into those that hear it, but it definitely should. Atlas Obscura says Murfreesboro, Illinois has repeated sightings of the Big Muddy Monster. Many believe it may be related to the Creve Coeur monster sighted near the St. Louis suburb. This is an animal often linked to Sasquatch in size and appearance, but with a distinct skunky smell. Those who believe the two cryptids are the same surmise that the animal swam down the Big Muddy River in Murfreesboro to the Mississippi River and thence north to the Missouri River by which it swam to a bend in the river near Crevcor. This is a big legend in Illinois, guys. One of the biggest urban legends, actually. It's part of the Murfreesboro culture at this point and something that the locals all know and fear. 1973 was when it was at its height and its reign of terror cast a dark shadow over the town. Since then, the sightings have become fewer and more unlikely, but people still believe it to be around and lurking here. Be very careful of this beast if you ever are in Illinois. And finally, number one on this list is the Oklahoma octopus. So obviously the octopus is a real creature, one that I actually think is pretty cool. They get significantly less cool though when they start killing people. There's a legend of an octopus in Oklahoma that does exactly that. Lake Thunderbird, Lake Ten Killer, and Ulaga Lake are apparently the home of this killer octopus, and swimmers in this area have all suffered its wrath at one point or another. For whatever reason, these lakes have an incredibly high mortality rate among swimmers. Like, way higher than any other bodies of water around the area. These lakes aren't particularly dangerous in any way either. Like they don't have strong currents or anything like that that would make it easy for somebody to drown, so why is this happening? Well, people have spotted in the depths of these lakes a tentacled creature that they believe to be the cause of this death. Octopi aren't typically known for living in freshwater areas, but it can happen and it's not impossible. If a big one has taken up residence in these lakes, then it could be the reason why swimmers keep drowning here. I also want to point out that some of the swimmers who have gone under are very experienced swimmers and their friends have said that Drowning by themselves without some type of outside entity would have been very unlikely for them. Octopus or not, stay away from these lakes. Number five on this list is the Liger. I feel like this is one of the most famous hybrid creatures that scientists have ever created. I remember as a kid thinking that these things were just some of the coolest animals ever. As an adult though, I can see how these guys could be a bit scary. A Liger is the offspring of a male lion and a female tiger. These Ligers are bred in captivity and can't produce young of their own once they're alive. The liger contains the features of both the male lion and female tiger, but they have some certain characteristics of their own. The most notable characteristic and what makes this a pretty scary animal is its size. Tigers and lions are already pretty big animals. They're the biggest cats in the world and some of the fiercest predators. The liger is bigger than both of them. The reason this liger grows larger than them is because a female lion has a gene to dampen the growth effects of lions, resulting in lions growing to the proper size. Female tigers don't have this gene at all, so you end up with these massive beasts that dwarf tigers and lions. These animals can grow to be over a thousand pounds, which is just absolutely massive. The thing is that they often come with a lot of problems. The breeding of these creatures is often looked at as unethical because these animals come with a lot of birth defects that often lead to a very short life. Nature didn't intend for lions and tigers to breed, so it's natural that there would be some problems with the process. Either way, a massive jungle cat that dwarfs the king of the jungle is still pretty scary to me and not the type of animal I'd want to get in a cage with. Number four on this list is the glowfish. Glowfish are hybrid fish that are bred to do exactly what you'd expect them to do. 
glow. Scientists in Singapore were looking for a way to make the fish glow. This wasn't just because it could look cool or maybe even scary, this was because the water pollution levels were getting bad and they wanted a way to be able to see the fish in polluted and muddied waters. So rather than clean the water and stop polluting it, they decided to try to make the fish glow. They took some genes from jellyfish that make the jellyfish glow and then basically added these to the fish. And sure enough, it worked. They now have several different kinds of glow in the dark fish that you can even buy as a pet. In fact, they've become rather popular and I will admit they are pretty cool. I think the little fish that we've worked on so far aren't as terrifying as some of the other creatures here, but when I was first reading about this, I was thinking about some other creatures that this could happen to, like a shark or a giant squid. If I was underwater and ran into one of those that also glows in the dark, not only would I be dead, but I'd also be freaked the heck out. Number three in this list is the Gen Pet. So the Gen Pet is actually a pet made by scientists that you can buy in a box. GenPets.com says, we use a process called zygote microinjection, which is quickly becoming a favorable method to combine DNA or to insert certain proteins from different species. Most notably, it was used in 1997 to splice mice with bioluminescent jellyfish and has since been used to create glowing rabbits, pigs, fish, and monkeys. Since then, human DNA has been injected into rabbits, chimpanzees, spider DNA into sheep, and now gen pets have arrived. Apparently, you can buy multiple different types of gen pets with multiple different personalities. Pretty cool, right? All right, I'll stop punking you guys. Gen pets are not real. The reason that I included them on this list is that for a long time, people thought that they were. If you go to the Gen Pets website, it really is super convincing. The way that this was marketed when it came out as well really had people buying into the legitimacy of these Gen Pets. They're super creepy looking things that I frankly wouldn't want to have as a pet, but I guess if you could grow it from a box, then I guess that'd be kind of neat. Sadly, we are unable to do that yet though. However, I could totally see something like Gen Pets coming out in the future that is actually real, and if they did look like this, then yeah, that'd be pretty terrifying. Number two on this list is the see-through frog. That's right, folks. Scientists have literally concocted a see-through frog in a lab. NBC News says, Scientists at Hiroshima University have succeeded in breeding see-through frogs, an innovation that could cut down on future dissections. Samida, an amphibian specialist who led the university's research team, said the transparent skinned frogs could become widely used in scientific research because internal organs and blood blood vessels can be observed without dissecting the creatures. Scientists have long known that certain recessive genes resulted in pale skinned frogs, Samita explained. The researchers were delighted to find that under the right conditions, second generations of pairs of frogs with those recessive genes produced transparent offspring. Now these frogs are definitely kind of creepy guys. Like they're cool, I'll give you that, but seeing the inside of an animal as its organs are literally moving around and doing stuff is a lot. I do like the idea of this though. The main reason they did this was to cut back on dissections of the animals. I remember dissecting my frog in grade 10 and that was definitely an experience that I think I could have avoided. I don't know if having to handle a see-through frog would be a lot better though. Taking a look at some of the pictures of these guys is already a bit unsettling, but at least this might save a few froggy lives. And finally, number one on this list is killer bees. The origin story behind killer bees is truly something directly from a disaster movie. IFL Science says, It started as a humble attempt to increase honey production during the 1950s and ended in thousands of newly created killer bees accidentally escaping, amounting in a trail of bee stung bodies across the Americas. It all began in a lab near Rio Claro in Brazil around 1957. Biologist Warwick E. Kerr was commissioned by the Brazilian government to create a species of bee that produced more honey. European species of honeybees had been introduced to South America, but unfortunately, they proved to be fairly unproductive in the sleepy heat of Brazil. Kerr and his team eventually created Africanized honeybees, now known as killer bees, through selective breeding of the African honeybee with various European honeybees. Initially, it was a success, as the new hybrid seemed to do a much better job of producing honey. There was one big downside though. They also adopted some extreme colony defense instincts. Then came the decisive moment. Somehow, under hazy circumstances, thousands of these bees managed to escape. 
Since these killer bees have gotten out into the world, over 400 people have died from them. Which is crazy to think about because these bees don't have any more potent venom than regular bees. Their sting is just as harmful as a normal bee that you'd see your walk by on your local hike. What makes these bees so killer, what makes them so deadly is their temperament. The killer instinct to fight instead of flee. To go after any threat that is in their way and do so as a team. These bees will literally chase a human being for over half a mile before finally giving up and going back to their hive. Think about having to run as fast as you can for half a mile from a swarm of bees. A regular bee doesn't want to sting you, it only ever wants to do so if it feels that you're a major threat. These bees sense that you're a threat and then turn into a threat of their own. And all of this could have been avoided had scientists not decided to play with nature. This is one of the few instances in history where we've taken an animal and completely changed its attitude but had it maintain the same physical characteristics as the original animal. It would be a really cool science experiment had it not been so deadly up until this point. Number 5 on this list is the Michigan Dogman. The Michigan Dogman is a scary urban legend of a creature from, yeah, you guessed it, Michigan. It is a massive 7 foot tall beast that stands on two legs and looks a bit like a canine, however it's got the torso of a man. One thing that's very notable about this fearsome creature is its extremely loud human scream that it lets out before it's coming to strike. The first sighting of it was back in 1887 and since then there's been many more sightings all in different regions of Michigan. What's interesting about this creature though is that you won't need to worry about running into it for at least a few more years. I can guarantee that you don't want to be walking around the forest and having this thing appear in front of you, but the good thing is that you don't need to worry about that until 2027. It's believed that this creature only appears in years that end with seven. During that year, it will be out and about in the forests of Michigan, hunting and preying on the victims that it finds. But whenever it isn't a year that ends in seven, it's in a deep slumber hidden somewhere in the state. If this thing was awake all the time, it very easily could be higher on this list because of how terrifying and deadly it can be. But because it's usually asleep, I'm not having it so high up. That being said though, still be careful if you're in a Michigan forest regardless of the year because I can only imagine that accidentally waking this thing up would probably be very bad for everybody involved. Number 4 on this list is the Amazonian Giant Centipede. Centipedes are gross guys. In fact, the only thing that might be grosser than a centipede is a millipede. The centipede that we're looking at today is a very real animal that isn't just gross, but it's flat out scary and dangerous. World Atlas says, The Peruvian giant yellow leg centipede, or the Amazonian giant centipede, is one of the largest centipede species in the world. The creature is about 30 centimeters long and preys on a large variety of animals. Interestingly, the centipede's diet is based not only on other invertebrates, but it can also overpower and kill creatures larger than it in size like lizards, snakes, frogs, mice, bats, and sparrow-sized birds. The centipede's primary weapons for killing prey are a pair of modified legs. The centipede uses these legs to penetrate the body of the victim and inject a highly toxic venom into their bloodstream. The killer creature can even climb the ceilings of caves where they can hold and manipulate their prey like bats with only a few legs attached to the ceiling. A four year old human child was reported to have been killed by the centipede venoms before. So not only can this scary arthropod kill people with its venom, but it's super difficult to fight. That's because it's extremely fast guys. Having 100 legs means that you can move pretty quickly and this thing definitely does. It can move up to 3 feet per second which is really fast considering its size. Also the nature of its body means that it can crawl into super small crevices that you might not see. The child who died from its venom actually happened to run into this thing in an empty soda can. The kid picked up the can not realizing what was inside and then the centipede struck. Running into this thing in the forest or honestly anywhere would be really horrible. 
If you see an Amazonian giant centipede, then just walk the other direction. Number three on this list is the skinwalkers. Skinwalkers, as described by All That's Interesting, are animalistic humanoid creatures chronicled in the centuries old folklore of various Native American tribes of the United States Southwest, most notably the Navajo, Pueblo, Apache, and Hopi's people. It is one of many shape shifting monsters from Native American legends. Skinwalkers are typically described with a beastly and deformed body, a marred, albeit humanoid face, and blazing orange red eyes. But the origins of these creatures vary among tribal cultures. Some traditions say skinwalkers are powerful medicine men who succumb to the temptation of using their abilities for evil. Other traditions claim that the skinwalkers are the punitive form of any man, woman, or child who commits a deep sin. In any case, the myth of the skinwalkers is well known among indigenous communities. These Native American monsters are described as incredibly powerful and nearly immortal. They can only be killed with a bullet or knife dipped in white ash, a bit reminiscent of a shapeshifter from popular culture, the werewolf and its weakness to silver bullets. Shapeshifting animal human beasts who are extremely difficult to kill and super athletic. These things are very dangerous and not a species that you want to mess with. Typically residing in the forested areas of northern United States and Canada, they often travel in groups, which just kind of adds to how absolutely dead you are if you do happen across some. Be very careful of the skinwalkers if you're trekking through some North American forests. Number two on this list is an electric eel. So you won't be finding an electric eel in any northern forests like Canada, where I live, which is honestly pretty good for me. But if you live in the Amazon and happen to be going through an Amazon forest, then it's very likely this creature will be in the rivers right next to you. Definitely do not go for a dip in those rivers though, because the electric eel might be waiting for you. World Atlas says a shocking danger lurks beneath the waters of Amazon River in Brazil. The electric eel is not a true eel, but actually a knife fish capable of delivering a massive electric shock to those who threaten it. Three pairs of abdominal organs of the fish allow it to generate electricity enough to stun an adult human being. The eels use their electricity generating capacity to stun prey before consuming them. Fatal attacks on humans are rare, but not completely non-existent. A single jolt could stun a human being enough to cause the person to stop breathing and drown even in shallow water. Multiple shocks could definitely trigger respiratory failure in humans. In the past, there are cases where the fish have delivered shocks strong enough to kill horses and even stun an adult caiman. If this fish can literally kill a horse, then we don't stand a chance, folks. There also literally isn't anything you can do about this thing other than just get out of the water. Like, it might be able to shock you without even touching you, so you might not even know that you're in danger. These things are also super gross looking and just not appealing as an animal at all. Super cool that they have electrical abilities, but not super cool if they use those abilities on me or you. And number one on this list is the Cherokee Horned Serpent. This is another Native American legend similar to the Skinwalkers, but this one is arguably far more dangerous. Another name for the Cherokee Horned Serpent is Euctina. The Euctina was, as you might imagine, a legend that originated from the Cherokee tribe in Western North Carolina. James Mooney, somebody who actually studied the Cherokee tribe, wrote about this beast in a book he published back in 1992. He wrote, those who know say that the Euctina is a great snake as large around as a tree trunk with horns on its head and a bright blazing crest with a diamond upon its forehead and scales glittering like sparks of fire. The blazing diamond is called Yolonsoti, transparent and he who can win it may become the greatest wonder worker of the tribe. Still, it is worth a man's life to attempt it, for whoever is seen by the Yuktana is so dazed by the bright light that he runs toward the snake instead of trying to escape. This diamond is so dazzling that it's going to draw you in and it's very problematic. You are going to lose if you fight this creature. It is just so strong and so powerful that unless you're literally an Avenger, you're just simply not going to stand a chance. It's said that these beasts are born out of envy and jealousy and come from the underworld. 
massive serpents with incredible powers that literally come from hell. These things might just be lurking around the forest near you, hugging onto a tree and waiting for somebody to come and try to take the diamond in their forehead. There are rumors that one warrior was actually able to defeat these beasts at some point, but that is honestly just a rumor and never been confirmed. Be very, very careful if you're walking around a North American forest by yourself, and if you see a diamond, just run.